with each new release of gyro flow, it's getting better and better with support for more cameras to collect gyro data, better output options, and even more stabilization features. It's becoming a tool that serious filmmakers can no longer ignore. If this is the first time you've been to my channel, welcome or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm here to talk about how to get the best results out of your cinema camera when you're filming with gyroflow. Let's have a look at the camera that I'm using. It's a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, but you can use any digital camera. A couple of things to note, the lens that I've got on the front is really wide. It's a 7.5mm, seven artisans lens. You can use any lens as long as it's wide. The longest lens that I've used that delivers good results is a 12mm, anything longer than that, and you just won't get stable results. I've got the GoPro mounted directly above the camera sensor, right in the middle of the camera body. It's mounted as low as I can on the camera itself. As you move the camera around, you're going to be collecting good gyro data in your GoPro. I'm using a GoPro Hero 5 session, but you can use any GoPro after GoPro 5. If you have a look in the description below, I'll put a link to all the action cameras that will work. So what are the camera settings that you need to get good results? Firstly, let's talk about the shutter angle. And the shutter angle that I'm using is 90 degrees. If you shoot in the standard 180 and try and stabilize it, you just don't get good results. You need to match the frame rate in your GoPro with the frame rate in your cinema camera. I'm shooting in 50 frames per second. And the shooting mode that I'm using is Ultra HD in ProRes light. The other important detail when you're using GyroFlow to get good results is to ensure your clips are as aligned as possible. The way I do that is I turn on the GoPro. As soon as I can start to see the tally light at the top, I press the record button on the pocket cinema camera. When I'm finished recording, I turn them both off at the same time. Every time you have a new lens and recording combination, you need to create a new lens profile. Check out my other video on how to create a lens profile to do this. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments in the section below, and I'll see you next time.